Hey, this is Toto Bravo, and uh, we're going to do a video tonight. Uh, the video is going to be a shot analysis on our late season uh, crossbow archery buck that we've uh, just harvested recently. Um, the reason why I decided to make a video about it is uh, the behavior of the animal, uh, the way that the, uh, the the way that the buck ducked the uh, the shot, the string. Uh, after I reviewed the video, I thought it was really interesting. I posted that video on a couple forums that I belong to here in Pennsylvania, and the amount of uh, conversation and uh, and opinions and uh, stuff that was shared on those posts, uh, probably over 300 posts on each uh, forum uh, concerning uh, that shot and the angles and the buck's reaction and so that kind of motivated me to to do an, a video and do an analysis on the shot so uh that's enough yap go ahead and roll some footage and as i roll this footage um i'm going to go ahead and narrate through the footage and then we'll stop and we'll film some cuts on some parts that i think are are uh or points that i want to make uh with the visual etc so we'll be back so in this video here you see that i'm looking out at my nine o'clock uh, out one of the small side windows in the blind. My chair and my main camera are facing my 12 o'clock, which is uh, straight forward. Now I've turned the main camera to face to the nine o'clock uh, because I've seen the three bucks uh, here in the field. So the camera, because it's an arm's length in front of me where I'm sitting and I have it turned to a 90 degree angle, it uh, portrays the buck as being broadside. Uh, but from my chair, I have my chair set back at a little bit of an angle, and like I said, I'm an arm's length away from the camera. The buck has a slight quartering away uh, appearance to me in my chair and, and out that side window. So that's how I'm positioned in the blind. Uh, so what I'm doing at this time is I'm getting my range finder. I'm getting that prepped. I'm double checking my bow as we're sitting here, and uh, I'm assessing that deer and uh, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and take that shot. I think I'm going to try to harvest this deer at this time once I validate his range and uh, I'm comfortable with that. So that's what our next step is going to be. So we're going to wait for him to step out from uh, behind this tree. All right, we see him taking his first step out. We zoom the camera in and we shoot our yardage. We get him at 43 yards. Now I'm comfortable with 43 yards. So I'm comfortable with that range. 45 yards is uh, what we've practiced with. It's uh, the max range that I'm comfortable with with this bow. Uh, this bow shoots 200, uh, I'm sorry, 324 feet per second. So it's kind of on the, the slow end of um, modern bow setups, the, the real bottom end. So 45 yards is about as uh, far as I want to shoot with this particular bow. So we're double checking everything, making sure everything's squared away cameras are uh, angled good we've got a uh, good line of sight with the deer we've got our second camera on the tack the cam unfortunately that didn't didn't function for us uh, uh, this time and you know, we've had some problems with that but that's a whole nother video so he's taking another step out we can see him he's got a little forward momentum going there so we're going to wait for him to come out a little more we want him to uh, be from behind that tree a little bit more before we take the shot now like I said earlier the deer looks broadside through the camera, and it is, but from my position, the way that I'm angled, the deer has a slight quartering away, ever so slight quartering away uh, appearance to me in the ground blind. So I'm going to compensate for my uh, my shot, my the angle that I'm that I'm seeing. I want to place the arrow a little further back from the elbow and a little high because what I want to do is I want to drive that arrow in. I know the arrow is going to go at an angle, so I want to drive it in at the back of the right lung and fully catch uh, center mass or center mass as I think I can set it up on the left lung side. And with a little luck, we'll get a complete pass. All right, I've added a visual reference to where my point of aim was and obviously the desired travel of the arrow. So catching the right lung exiting through the left lung. That was what we were planning. So here comes the shot. You can see the fletching fly and you can see how much 
that buck ducked the string. He let gravity do all the work and he just let it drop. I mean, that was absolutely amazing. The amount of drop that that deer demonstrated right there. Now, as the deer is running away, you can see the arrow sticking out of the left side. So from here, it looks like we've caught the deer with a good shot. It looks like a double lung shot. Watching the video and watching it numerous times, you can see the buck definitely drop the string. I mean, he just let gravity do all the work and his chest hit the ground. Now, he was dropping before the arrow ever got there. Uh, in addition to dropping the string, he also began to turn his body to the left, which created more of a quartering away shot. So what we're going to look at now is I'm going to show you guys what my point of aim was utilizing my handy dandy deer target here and my practice arrow with my swacker broadhead on it. So we had to move the camera a little bit because we're going to use a visual aid here. So the buck was canted or quartered away kind of like that. And I'm sitting back here. We use the camera as my point. Now, I'm aiming, my point of aim at this time is I'm taking the elbow, I came back, and I went a little high, and my train of thought was, I know the arrow is going to be flying at an angle, like this. That's why in the video, uh, I was getting some comments, especially when I posted on the forums, that when the arrow was about to impact, a lot of people were seeing the fletchings, which are way back here, look like they were lined up with the, the back end of the animal, and some folks were saying that I, I shot it in the hindquarters, where all they were seeing was the fletching at the back of the bolt, but, you know, visually from the camera, it looked like, you know, that's where it had gone into, when in fact it wasn't. The bolt was flying like this, was to catch the animal at the back of the lungs, pass through back of the lungs and completely exit the opposite side of the deer like that catching the left side lungs center mass and hopefully getting a complete pass through so that's what i was envisioning with my point of aim and my shot just like that now in reality what happened was the animal dropped down and turned my point of it, my impact was up here. So this is where the impact was after he dropped. So I know that's kind of rough, but I think it gives a good visual reference. So point of aim was here. The animal dropped. Ass end went up. Front end went down. He also turned his body away this way. Shot went from where it was aimed to several inches high catching the very top of the lung on the left side, passing through almost completely uh, the other side. Uh, did Not a complete pass-through, but uh, just about a complete pass-through, catching that whole left lung. So still a double lung shot. We were very fortunate, but uh, definitely not where our point of aim was. So that's what this visual aid was for. All right, here's the shot again. It's uh, slowed down just a little more. So we can take a look at it again. Um, I'm going to put up a couple visual uh, references here for the deer anatomy again. So uh, it should be slow enough, as the, the footage I mean, that we can go ahead and look at the, the position of the deer's elbow in reference to the elbow on the chart there, where the vitals are located. I mean, textbook right there, right? I mean, even though he's quartered away to me, you know, I can clearly see the rib cage there. I've, I've got my shot lined up. I know where my point of aim is. There goes the shaft. You can see where it's located. You can see him starting to drop. He's reacting. The bolt's not even there yet. That's that visual that I was talking about with the fletchings looking like they're in the hindquarters, when in fact that's the back of the shaft as it's traveling at an angle. There's probably 17 or 18 inches of arrow in front of that. We haven't even impacted the animal yet. That should be coming up here in the next sequence of shots. But that does give you a good solid reference to how quickly he reacted. He, he's already starting to drop there, which is just amazing. I mean, just how fast he goes is, is something else. 
in my opinion. So we're going to pick up here. There he goes down. And we have impact right there. So you could tell by his neck the way he kind of cringed as the bolt went in right. We're going again here. So you can see the fletching once more and his reaction as the bolt goes in. So we caught that back top right part of the right lung and completely smashed the uh, left lung. There it is once more. Bolt's going in. We have impact all the way through the left side and sticking out the right side. Another visual there with another placard. And that arrow there kind of demonstrates where we actually hit once he ducked and the path of the arrow. I mean, that's fairly accurate right there. So we caught that right side lung at the rear top and center mast, pretty much that uh, left side lung. So ultimately the shot was effective, but again, a lot of luck. We're gonna look at now, picture the deer as we found it with the uh, entrance wound uh, from the Swacker Broadhead. And we're gonna look at that and compare it to another anatomy placard that we have put up. This is Toto Bravo. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, and until I see you out on the range again, thanks for watching.